Good morning, welcome to Newbury Racecourse. A little bit drizzly and overcast, but it is the Coral Gallops morning. We're less than two weeks away from the big meeting here at Newbury. It's a well-supported morning as ever. The likes of Nicky Henderson, Paul Nichols, Joe Tizard, Jamie Snowden, all here in attendance, bringing horses with selected targets across the big weekend and further afield uh, to just flex their muscles and have a gallop out at the track. Plenty going on this morning and lots of trainers sharing their thoughts ahead of the big meeting. Les Milos pushed all the way by Remastered. The loose horse is coming into play. Les Milos by a half to Remastered. Harry Skelton working with every sinew on Les Milos and just lifts the Coral Gold Cup. Dan Skelton, Coral Gold Cup winning trainer alongside. Just to well, reminisce about that day 12 months ago, Les Milos. How special a day was that for you, the family and everyone attached to the yard? Oh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic. And I said to the owners... Um, uh, sort of like I don't know six weeks before it you know we'll put an entry in maybe he could be there we were talking about the beacher as well and then obviously he won at Bangor and mm. sometimes you know the script writes itself um, and he was fabulous very very tough horse you know I, I consider this race to be almost like once in a lifetime race you'd want it to happen twice three times five times in a lifetime just <laughs> by nature of what I'm like and what other trainers are like we always want to win but it is something that you can look back and go well we won it yeah. once or whatever and um, it's a hard race to win. It, 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 it took me by, not by surprise, but you know when I've worked for Paul and, and doing it myself, so it, it, it's surprising how hard a race it is. It's not a normal three-mile handicap. You know, it is it is a very tough, tough race. And because of the days with Paul, they were they were epic days. Obviously, in your your past career, did it make it all the more special that your name was etched on the the winning trophy? Absolutely. Yeah. No. It's 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 like I say, it's one of those biggies of the year, um, and. You need a you need a special horse to, to do it. You do. There's no point. You know you need. Okay, that you know you've had the likes. You've had Gold Cup winners win it before. Okay, there wasn't a Gold Cup horse in the field last year, but it doesn't mean it was any less competitive. Uh, who is in the squad for that race this year? Midnight River is the is the first and foremost. Yep. Um, and I will probably confirm uh, Galia de Lito, just in case it got really really soft. She won at uh, Market Raisin last week and. In a mare's race around a track that in hindsight definitely didn't suit her um but you know first and foremost is is midnight river uh and off the back of the charlie hall last time obviously lots of talked about the finish of the race but but how did you see your horse running or reflect on your horse running in isolation there uh, you, you've put it right i you know he's in isolation the front yeah. two kick clear we're not you know when we're not up to beating those at level weights or getting a few pound um and he ran very creditably, I thought. You know, he jumped nicely, did everything that we asked him to do. The, the, the front two skipped clear and, you know, we were allowed to almost come home in our own time. And he, he had a he had a grand day out, um, you know, and it's not, not us having a run back in third. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we, if you watch it back, we were bang up there turning in. And I'm glad the meeting was on as well. It was touch and go, that one, wasn't it? Well, exactly. And we had him we had him entered the day before over two and a half, which would probably have been a more sensible race to run him in. But mm. that was off. So you had to go for Saturday. And that's that's been the nature of this autumn, really. It's been very hard to get horses fit and get them right. And put the, it's just been a nightmare. Um, all trainers are, are, are target trainers. Of course, you, you look which race you're going to run in and try and win it, of course. But I, I always associate you guys with doing that in particular. And I know that when Harry got off Midnight River in April at the Grand National Meeting, the words Coral Gold Cup were mentioned even six, seven months away. You've got to have a plan and um, you know, you've got to build your horse up to these days because you know, a horse can only peak once a year, twice maximum. Um, so you've got to pick and choose your right day. There's no point walking into the front of the season going, oh, well, we'll see where we'll end up um, because you often end up not as good as you could be. So picking and choosing your targets, uh, you know, they're not all going to come off. Um, you know, when you've built up to something special and it doesn't come off, you feel a bit deflated, yeah. but you have to dust yourself off and have another go. But um, we had this in mind for a long time with him. Uh, to be honest with you, I was thinking about it from when Lamilos won it last year because um, Midnight River had run a nice race in the in the Paddy Power at that point, and we knew he was going to step up in trip. And you, know, you look along the line and think he he could just be the one for that next year. I know he didn't come here today. Uh, who did come with a view to future targets over the next few weeks? So the two that are going to come here are Etalon, uh, uh, beautiful big horse um, by Sholokov, who's you know, we've we've not hard trained all his life we we've been pretty cautious with him he's nearly 17 hands um, he won over hurdles but only because he's got ability he was always going to be suited as a chaser we'll probably try and bite off a big lump of cake on the friday in the in the novices race uh, over fences um he doesn't have to win 
that to think that he's going to go and have a big career going forward but he'd definitely be one with the chance I think he's a smart horse going forward and then probably on the Friday as well grey horse uh, that you saw gallop in sail away mm. he won a, um, a very competitive and valuable uh, novices chase at the back end of the season at, at air um, and I don't fear a drop back in trip for him at all um, and I think he'd be very competitive in the big handicap on, on the Friday I'll give him an entry in the Peter O'Sullivan as well yes. but I think I think he's more likely to two and a half, and then the Peter O'Sullivan should probably run Heltenham. Yep. Who ran an absolute belter, of course, over hurdles last time. He did. It was probably unpleasant viewing, but I'd say Tristan, who rode him, had an even more unpleasant time on top because he's not very respectful of hurdles. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he, he is a horse that won very well here last year yep. and, and wants, wants plenty of cut in the ground. I wouldn't bring Heltenham if it wasn't slow. And, a, and lastly, a word on, on my Drogo as well. Long time absent, always extremely highly regarded. How is he post Old Brown? Good. And then that, that's, the, that's the main thing is that that first run's behind us. Um, I don't know why it's been a nightmare getting these horses back that have had a long time off. Um, Shan Blue, uh, Nurse Susan, to name a couple of others. Yeah. I don't know why it's just been a very lacklustre first run. Um, we're obviously expecting a lot more for them, from them on the day and we'll be expecting a lot more of them going forward. Um, and my Drogo falls very much into that category. The good thing about Aintree is it's behind us. We got him going. Mm. Um, loads of work into him now before he goes to the Peterborough and that'll give us a, a bit more of a reading. But, you know, I, I, I haven't done anything different with these horses and yet they they're needing the run unbelievably and I, I don't know why that is there's no point in me saying I've got it worked out and I know why I really really don't but um, you know it'll come right it'll come right Coral Gold Cup winning trainer John Journeyl joins me um, I think we'll start with the the memories of three years ago in the, the colours of the late Trevor Hemis cloth cap what an excellent display that was just in your training career how significant a win was that John Joe? Oh, it was brilliant. Everybody likes to win these big races, really, and Trevor being such a great supporter of the game, and he did it so well, it was brilliant, you know, fantastic, great day. Um, we were just remarking as well, as a rider, you were saying, obviously, you'd, you'd had experience in it, finishing second. As, a, as an event and as a, a race to ride in, just how sort of helter-skelter, how much of a cavalry charge, even over three and a bit miles, can this be? Oh, it's a bit like the Grand National. They jump out and they go. They are galloped down to the first, and it's a great gallop. It's a great track to ride, in and um, it's a great race to ride. And um, the fences are brilliant, and everything. You know, if you're riding a nice horse in the race and you're having a good run, it's a brilliant race to ride, really. And um, it kind of suits our fella, I think, really the way a good gallop. He's a good stayer, and he, the only thing he does need, he needs a good cut in the ground really um, but we're very happy with him he's in good form and if everything goes well from now until the day he'll come here with a live chance hopefully That is Monbeg Genius who ran that storming race when third at the Cheltenham Festival, we know the form of that particular race of course, uh, how's he been since since Ascot, the first race back this season? Uh, he's been fine really, he was un a bit unlucky at Ascot, you know it was nice to get the run in Tim but um, he, he seems fine after it. He just got collided with another horse there at that fence, and it's just at the wrong time of the race, really. And he did the right thing and, and left him alone. So um, hopefully he, he come come here after the gallop this morning. Now he went well, yeah. and um, he's in good form. If we can keep him like that and keep him happy until. So had a week, we'll be happy. So because Ascot was unsatisfactory for the fact that what happened, happened, does, does a morning like this just help you give him, well, that away day, a little bit more exercise? Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. It's grand and um, they look, you know, it books up, books them up really, doesn't it? You know, coming, coming to the track and getting the canter around like that is nice, really. So, you know, it was ideal for him, really. So our systems go. Yeah, and knowing his profile, has this race been etched in your mind for a while? Yeah, we from last year we yeah. said this is probably where we want to be going, you know. Um, normally, it's it's a bit harder to get him ready for these races because the ground will be quite quick. But it's you know as the way it was this season is it was all falling into place and then the race went all wrong. <laughs> That's life, isn't it? That is life. Uh, who was he here with this morning galloping? He was here with Iron Bridge, uh, who will go to uh, Chepstow in a couple of weeks for the trial race. 
and then um, we'll see where we go from there. He's he's in good form. He was unfortunately he got his jaw broken out in the field in the summer, um, and um, he was a little bit late coming back, but yeah. he went around there nicely. Now it'll do him the world of good, and um, hopefully uh, we'll see how we go in that trial. Joe Tizard joining us at the uh, Gallops morning here at Newbury and I guess over the last decade or so, Joe, this, this race, the Coral Gold Cup, has been such a significant point in the calendar for all your team. Yeah, we, you know, we've, um, we've had real good times. We've been lucky enough to win the big race a couple of times with Native River and Sides in Tennessee and, and other horses have ran really well in it and you know, we've brought good horses good horses to this to this meeting you know yeah. like of thistle crack and Q card as a novice and, and things like that so um no, we've had a good time here how much of a thrill ride was this race uh taking you back to the to the riding days yeah i, I remember i rode some lovely horses in it for, for paul and i remember the first time i i got the opportunity to ride in it you know i've always grown up known it as the hennessy then and um you know it's um it's a privilege to ride in a race like this and you know i remember one of the, probably the first time I rode in it, I think Tita Mill won it, you know, and, and Norman Williamson bought champagne for the weighing room and that afterwards, and that's how it used to happen. So, no, it's, um, they've got some really fond memories. Yeah, I guess I've always sort of felt that this race has had, as you said, formerly Hennessy, now Coral Gold Cup, just a real sense of an occasion, a really important date in the calendar. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, of course it is. It's, it's the biggest handicap in it. it the first half of the season, you know, for the obviously mm. for the for the three milers. So, um, you know, it's it's got a great reputation and and certainly is carrying on as well. And this year looks like, looks a fantastic renewal. I mean, perhaps when size in Tennessee won it, perhaps it wasn't necessarily the strongest renewal in, in the world. But this year looks looks to be a very hot race. And it's El Dorado Allen for you, who's been such a, a flag bearer for a number of years now. Yeah, he's been he's been fantastic. You know, he's he's um, last year we we. Just went in all the hot races, you know, second in a Charlie Hall, second in a Betfair Chase, fourth in a King George, um, without getting it, without getting his head in front, you know. So, so we've the handicapper has given him a big, a big chance now. He's dropped him into, dropped him back to a nice, nice handicap mark, and um, you know, he's a class horse, he's a graded horse in a, in a handicap, as simple as that. Yeah. And he's enjoyed it here, Denman Chase winner last year. Yeah, loves the Denman, loves the track, um, operates well around it. Trip. I think you'll get it. You know, that's that's maybe one thing it half in the back of our mind. You know, he was second in an arco and he was placed in a Ryanair. But I, I think as he's got older, he gets further. And, and even at Ascot, he took a blow and then stayed on again. So on his on his prep run, so um, it comes around good form. Um, he's been joined by a younger horse who's new to the eye, right? So Tom, who we saw in Grade One races when trained in Ireland, of course, coming to the Triumph last year, running huge races at monster prices. What's the story about you getting hold of him? I bought him privately. Um, you know, won his last race in Ireland impressively and um you know we were looking to replace oscar's elite for the middletons in yeah. in, in ross doyle um sourced him privately you know it's, the lovely thing about him is he's a four-year-old and he's he's been there and got the experience so so i'm just kind of minded him a little bit this autumn because i don't need to get experience runs into him he's run four times over hurdles she's a novice all season um we're like what we we'll see Fred said to give him a lovely feel this morning, albeit we didn't we didn't go mad on him, but we, we it's the first away day we've had with him. So um, Fred Fred said he felt like a nice horse, so we'll 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 take our time with him and and hopefully hopefully make him into that. Any idea where first? Uh, there's a possibility he might go to um, to Cheltenham on the fifteenth in a novice hurdle there. Okay. Um, so so we're not going to necessarily start small with him but um, but we we we'll, it's just it's just a normal novice he'll have a penalty it's not a, not a graded novice or anything and then um and then we'll see from that and i must ask you just very quickly after the weekend that was jpr one in the process of of running i don't need to tell you what a great race he was going to run how is he and have you have you thought about where next well he's he's come out of it absolutely a1 you know there's okay. not a mark on him he's fine um and i love the fact that he's gone up 11 and um People are seeing what. Well, if, if he'd have fallen five out, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have known, you know how he was. But he, he jumped like he jumped for fun. He quickened away so well, two out, and, and was and was definitely going to be very impressive. Um, he didn't even make a mistake at last. It just just stumbles over his own feet. But um, he's absolutely fine. 
you know, there's, I don't see there's any reason to to not have a crack at the um, Henry VIII with yeah. him. With him, to be honest, you know, I'm I'm not concerned about his jumping. He's a six year old, and 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 bar the stumble. <clears throat> We'd definitely be going there, so so I've got no reason not to. Super stuff. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Nicky Henderson, the Coral Gold Cup, formerly the, the Hem- Hennessy Gold Cup. Um, um, is Dusart the name on the team sheet for this year? Oh, he is. Yeah, it's always been the plan. Um, you know, we, we've had him in a couple of races earlier on, and the ground still keeps, you know, it has been unreasonably wet. Um, so obviously not surprising. I'd like it to have a, you know, try 10 days would help yeah. us a lot. Um, but no, we've always said we'd come here and give it a go. I ever heard you saying he, he he was missing last year. Do you feel like you found him again? Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah, straight, there was no di- a different horse straight away when he came in this year to what he was last year. He's got his sort of bounce back in him, and oh, he seems really well. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the squad for that meeting, Marie's Rock. Now, we've always known her class, and she was brilliant, of course, Mayor's Hurdles here and over in Ireland as well. But did you unlock a door with her staying-wise last year towards the end of the year? I think so. I mean, she was very good at, at, at Cheltenham first time out. I thought she'd, she was disappointing at the festival, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but then we popped her up to three miles for Aintree, and she was really good. So, I mean, she was second, but I mean, she travelled very strongly and she looked if that's what she was enjoying. And she now, uh, I guess we, we didn't see her until New Year's Day, is that right? So, so yeah. she's, she's going to effectively have earlier targets this season? Well, when you were trying to go two and a half, which yeah. I was last year, there was just no race for her. Mm. Um, come the Ascot race, that was that ground would have been a bit too quick for her. But we had literally nowhere to go until New Year's Day. And she was very impressive in that. But... Um, you know, it looked if she handled three miles. She's probably bred to get three miles. So as she gets a bit older, it's probably coming easy. And and, and with Newber in mind, then do we start looking at long long walk hurdles, cleave hurdles and so on? I hope dear old champ will be back in time for the long walk. He, he won this race here at Newbury last year. Actually, that was a great race he had with, with Paisley Park. Um, and then the long walk. But I think Champ's quite well fresh, so probably he had a little setback at the beginning of the season and he had a thing called an entrapped epiglottis, right. which is a complicated procedure, which actually is not. It's very easy to mend, but it just takes 10 days and, of course, that sets the whole programme back. But he'll be back, I'd hope, for the long walk and Marie's Rock could come into that as well if all goes well here. Yes, Champ's record fresh is outstanding. In the same colours as Champ, he's under control booked to come here for, for the Jerry Field. That's always been the plan, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it looked the right race for her. We've, it's a race we... I, I love the race. It's perfect for second season novices. You know, First Street won it last year. Epitant came through it. Um, yeah, it was a race I like a lot, and it, 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 she said she was the one that we'd singled out really because, you know, she'd actually beaten Iberico Lord in the in that valuable novice at Sandown on the last day, and it looks as if Iberico's probably sort of franked that form on Saturday. So, you know, hopefully she can, you know, this has always been her intended debut. Paisley Park is now an 11-year-old. He has been a fantastic servant, both for the stable and, of course, for his owner, Andrew Gemmell. So a chance to pay tribute to one of the most popular horses in national hunt racing, and it's terrific to see him here. He has been here in the past. Barry Fenton, who, of course, knows him so well and been a fantastic servant for the Emma Lavelle Yard. Hopefully the fire does burn still brightly. I believe so. That's the reason that... uh, He's very happy at home and work-wise, still enthusiastic. As I say, sometimes he's just keeps a little bit uh, to himself on certain days. But it'd be fantastic if he can line up in this race again. It's great to see him here. So Paisley Park on the far side. Number 13, Maroon Cap. Barry just giving him a little bit of a workout. Alongside the younger horse, Joe Anderson riding Mount Ferns. That is the Emma Lavelle pair again. Emma's been a long-standing supporter of this morning, and it's terrific to see Paisley. As soon as, as soon as Barry's dropped his hands, he knows he's done enough. He's pulled himself up in 25 yards. Paisley Park, great to see him here, and hopefully we'll be welcoming him back on Friday week. Uh, Jamie Snowden, a supporter of the, the Coral Gallops morning here this morning. Who have you bought and what are their, their intended targets? Uh, so That's Right Gina and Garl all both came. Um, Gav sat on That's Right Gina and our young 
um, conditional jockey Will Featherstone rode, rode Galore. So, uh, yeah, they both had a good gallop round there and, you know, very positive. Uh, has this been another step on the, the sort of the agenda, if you will, from Weatherby for Galore? So Garlaw's a, a slightly trickier case in, in, in many circumstances because obviously he won the Paddy Power Gold Cup last yeah. year um, looking a really progressive second season novice chaser. Um, really missed a year, but second season novice chaser last year and um, went up to the Skybet chase at, uh, at Doncaster going to win his race and came down at the last. Yep. Um, kind of dented his confidence a little bit and um, we've been on a bit of a retrieval mission since then. Um, had a run over hurdles at the start of the season, got his legs sort of stuck in the ground at Weatherby, very deep ground. Um, so we'll come here, um, hopefully a hoist in your runs and keeps the weights down a little bit. Um, he's off a nice, uh, uh, he'll be off a nice weight to um, hopefully have a nice confidence boost in gallop round. And you'd be satisfied with the distance for, for him with this race, because you talk about the Paddy Power Gold Cup, but it's not like he doesn't stay. He stays well, yeah. so it's not a case of that. Um, it's just a case of getting his mojo back in the right place and um, getting back on the, on the straight and narrow. And can you see from him, I don't know how much he'd from him here but at home is there is there sort of a bit of spice about him again yeah listen um, plenty of spice about him at yeah. home and i am you know very happy with him at home hence the reason why i wanted to bring him here today with that without any pressure just let him get onto the race course have a nice canter around and um enjoy himself and hopefully you know that will do his confidence of how good and how's that's all right gina going into this great yeah, yeah delighted with him yeah i'm really happy obviously he was a, a very progressive novice chaser last year he improved 20 pounds um chased home stage star at, uh, at Cheltenham, won a grade two at the, the, the Scottish National Meeting. So um, he's, a, he's a nice type. Gavin's very keen to go up and trip with him. Um, he's been doing most of his winning over, over two and a half, really. Um, but Gavin's always been adamant that he wants three miles. So we sort of come here as an unexposed type over that kind of trip. You wear it well. I must ask you about her while, while we're here. Uh, what is the, the next step for her? Uh, the, the next step. I know what the final step is, okay. um, and I know two steps to get to that. Um, I suppose um, I was very pleased with her at Weatherby. She she won very nicely. The form of that's very good. Obviously, Lucia came out, finished third in the in the Great Wood. Mm. Um, she's in great order at home. Um, the mares the mares races are sort of they map themselves out. There's Sandown in January. There's Warwick in February, and, and then obviously Cheltenham in March. So um, the question is, do we go anywhere in December? And if we do go somewhere in December, where is it? Um, got him in the fighting uh, her in the fighting fifth but yes. um there's something like constitution hill standing in a way so um we'll, we'll just see where we are but she's in great order it's funny you hear people talk constitution hill somebody's got to finish second etc and um you you rate your mayor extremely highly and why not but are you tempted by the fact that it, it will probably be a small field uh, nobody likes finishing second no, do they true no they wouldn't but i guess there are there are horses and then there are constitution hills exactly um uh, let, let's let's see where we are. Let's see where we are. Um, listen, you should never be afraid of one horse, but um, Constitu- Constitution Hill's not just one horse, is no, it? No, she's she's very special to you and all the team, though, isn't she? She is. Listen, she's um, she's very special. She's um, she's done very very little wrong in her career to date, and um, to supply us with a second festival winner was very special indeed. And you know, Sir Chips Keswick, who's a big supporter of ours, big supporter of racing, owns her, and I'm delighted he does. It's um, we have a lot of fun. Paul Nichols as a, as a trainer and as formerly a jockey, the race that was the Hennessy, now the Coral Gold Cup. How much has this been a, a significant race in your life? Well, when I was riding, it was massive. Um, you know, to win it in 86 and 87, Broadheath and Play School, it was fantastic. Great days, great memories. And what about as a trainer? I'm reminded here yeah. when you come and see oh, the Denman well, Gates. I mean, well, Denman, you know, well, first of all, strong flow, one is a novice. Yep. That was a fantastic uh, day the first time and then when Denman won those two races you know with top weight particularly the year I think when he beat what a friend was amazing because what a friend had 10 stone and the next time what a friend won a grade one that was an incredible performance and of course Denman lifted the roof here didn't he, he was, yeah. those those were fantastic days that twice he won what is it what was it about those horses in particular Denman in particular that that, that Newbury and this race just suited class you know they've got you know that it just shows you that, you know like Denman was a Gold Cup winner and wins this race. You need a very good horse to win it, and it's a handicap. And for him to carry top weight like he did was was incredible. I mean, I remember some hope saying one of the greatest weight carrying performances in any handicap, and he was fantastic. And it's a it's an iconic race to win, and it's a race I really like targeting. Uh, you're targeting it this year with with complete unknown. How is the horse at this stage going into the race? What a week and a half away. They just did a lovely piece of work round there. He had a lovely run at Newton Abbott and won. 
he's bang on. You know, this has been his target all season, and we love targeting races, as you saw on Saturday. And um, I'm very happy with him. I just wouldn't mind it raining all next week. That, saying, saying that, he doesn't mind. He, he can perform on good to soft ground, right. as he did when he was second Jerry Comedy I said Aintree. But he is particularly good on it very soft. You said you targeted it. That, that race actually at Newton Abbott has been a really yeah. important graduation race yeah. for you. Some of the good horses yeah. have, have won it. How long in advance has this been the plan for Complete Unknown? Since he came in in July. Well, yeah. since when he, he ended last season, really. It was obvious. It's a good race for second season, obviously. I I've always, I just literally always had in my mind he would be the ideal horse for this. And then, of course, Strong Flow won the Newton Abbott race Indeed. before he came here. And then, obviously, the... Pick Dory, Brave Man's Game and Co won that race and done and been good horses. And I, I think he's a smart horse, complete unknown. I'm, I might be wrong, but was Hermes Alain going to run in that Newton Abbott race? He was. Um, was a possible. Right. Um, but when the ground went heavy, it was it was an ideal one for complete unknown rather than go for the Colin Parker. And I wasn't going to run Hermes on heavy ground on his first run of the season. Then he had a setback, had a stone bruise, and I missed three weeks with him. So I've been chasing my tail with him. And today's gallop would have done him the world of good. And he actually went, Freddie was thrilled with him very nicely. So I'd say we'd better run him next Friday in the in the John Frankham. That's the plan, to go yeah. to go to the John Frankham. Yeah. And of course, he was so good here in the uh, in the yeah. cello last year. He was, and you know, he, he, he did very well. He won at Stratford, then he won at Cheltenham, and then he won the cello. And sort of the things went off yeah. a little bit afterwards. But he was struggling with his breathing. So he had a breathing up in the summer. That's bound to have helped him. Whatever he does next week, he will improve, but he's ready to run, which is the most important thing. And I must ask you, just lastly on the novice chasers, we saw Nappers Hill flex his muscles last week. Uh, how highly do you regard them as a set this year? Well, the, the, him and Stay Away Fay and yeah. a few others. I've got a lovely horse called Golden Sun who was second to Oko the other day at um, Warwick. Now, yeah. he hadn't run for 18 months and was impossible to get fit first time. I like him a lot as well. He's not far behind those three. We are lucky to have a lovely team of novice chasers and you have the three particularly, Nappers Hill, Stay Away Fay and Hermes Allen are very smart horses and it's very exciting. Just got to try and keep them apart for now. Exciting times, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. George Hill, clerk of the course here at Newbury, joins me. Um, High-profile horses galloping this morning. What's the, the overall reaction been to the ground out there? I think everyone's enjoyed it. Um, where they were galloping this morning is on the very A side of the, the hurdle track, verging on the flat track. So uh, it's, it's a bit softer out there. It's obviously been uh, watered uh, throughout the summer, so... It, uh, it's it's a bit it's a bit softer out there compared to the rest of the track. So conditions were probably a mixture between soft and good to soft ground out there for them this morning. But uh, the jockeys seem to appreciate it. So. I bet. Um, just as an overview, we're sort of less than two weeks away now from the from the big weekend. Um, how has the weather been, and what are you forecasting? Yeah, the weather has been. Uh, Perfect for <laughs> prep for jump racing. Really, yeah. we we had our first meeting, opening meeting, on the the ninth of November. Uh, we we had a lot of runners that day. We yeah. ground was pretty pretty perfect for them. It was um, a mixture between good to soft, soft on the hurdle track and good to soft, good in places on the on the chase track that day. At the moment. Uh, the hurdle track would be good to soft, soft in places, and the, the chase track would be good to soft at the moment. Um, forecast between now and the two-day Carl meeting, um, it's getting colder this uh, this weekend. Okay. Uh, we'll drop to minus one or possibly uh, to minus two, um, with highs of kind of five or six degrees. So next week looks predominantly dry, risk of the odd shower, but predominantly dry for the next nine, ten days by the looks of it. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.